So Roches just released a new frame. It's called the RF1. And they are advertising it as a flat and anti-rocker frame. Did they found the magic formula? Let's find out. Hola YouTube, my name is Ricarolino and I'm a wheel addict. Over the past week, I've been testing this Roches RF1 frame. Uh, Roches also released this new skate, it's the M12 Juno, and I'm skating the M12 Juno with the RF1 frame, dead 95A wheels, 56 millimeters, and 92A in the front and back. Roches RL1 liner. Now, before we go any further, let me tell you that this video is sponsored by Bladeville. Bladeville is a shop in Poland that ships worldwide and they have a, a deal, ongoing deal with this channel. So if you press on the link in the description, you will find the deal that is going on right now. Independently on when you're watching this video, that deal is going on right now. So check that link check if you can take advantage of it and now let's get back to the video previously i've skated this frame also with just 58 millimeters front and back anti-rocker and i freaking love it i was creating some content while doing this video while doing the research for this video i was creating some content for my patreon skating this frame anti-rocker and i really love it it's probably one of the best anti-rocker frames that i've skated but for this video this part that you just saw in the beginning of this video i really wanted to skate them flat i did skate them flat once before these this couple of tricks that you saw here, once again, making another video for Patreon, where all I had was like a little P-rail, kind of like a slim P-rail, and it felt really good. It felt really, really good. But I couldn't take that as a test, as a flat test for a frame that it's supposed to be flat and anti-rocker. So I, I took it to the park, I wanted to test the speed, but of course skating 56 is always not the best for speed. But I can tell you that this is a very fast frame, especially for this size of wheels. And that's because of these bridges that it has here just like the dam frames or just like the adapt the symmet the symmetrics frames this is one of those frames that if you take the 
the wheel off the frame will not close so it's actually very cool to change wheels on this very easy you don't need to hit it with the hammer or anything like that it's just very easy and also very cool and also like the damn frames you have one of these one-sided axles basically on one side uh, it fits the shape that it's already uh, made on the frame so like there's like a square like a side like it's so weird it's weird to explain but like a little bit of a shifted uh, square that's how you call it that's how you say it i think that gets into the frame and on the other side you have a screw so you only need one tool to change the wheels which is really cool you don't need to go around with two with two allen keys anymore i think it's getting more and more common i think only kaiser still does the the two-sided bolts and they used to do the one-sided on the slim lines anyway back on the rf1 so it felt like fast especially because i skated them with 56s but as a as a flat frame my first reactions was like i think this groove is going to be too deep there's no wheel protection and the truth is yes there is no wheel protection so i was actually scared to skate it with bigger than 56s and i've seen some of the guys on the Rochester team skating with 60 millimeters such as jimbo in italy and other guys some other skaters are skating it with 50 with 60 millimeters i'll be scared and the reason is once again because the wheels are too exposed but when i skated them with 56s like here and especially being harder in the middle they skate really good like the wheels are shifted to the side so you have even if the wheels are exposed the block is quite big and because the block is deep i know that not everyone is going to like it but because it's a deep groove you don't need to bend your foot so much so especially on the m12 you kind of feel like right here you're already touching so as an example this is my finger here i'm already touching if the frame was more shallow i would need to be a lot more sideways so it is hard because in most skates if it doesn't go sideways enough you don't need to lean enough then the wheels will touch especially if the wheels have one of these shapes one of these profiles like these ones have so i would say that for this frame i would be scared to skate bigger than 56s especially if they were the square type of wheels you know like some 60 millimeter wheels that have a profile very square on top then i would feel that the wheels would be way too exposed but if i would use a pointier wheel example undercover has a 59 millimeter wheel that it's extremely pointy like it's like a goalie a okay goalie wheel and on that wheel i think that wheel would work re would work really good here in this frame because they would be it would be covered basically something that also happens about this frame is that it comes like you can see the shape here on the on this side of the frame instead of being like square it's already it already has like these shaped at uh, 45 degree which i appreciate it for some things especially when i want to like carve on a bowl or something like that it doesn't touch and i don't fall because of the the corner of the frames touching but having those corners exposed can also be helpful especially because it would be some would give you some wheel protection at the end of the day and as a conclusion the way that i feel this frame is yes it can work as a flat frame but i think for you to use a flat frame you would need to really watch out with the profile of the wheel that you use and i would preferably use much harder wheels in the middle like i use 95s here now if you want to use four times 60 millimeters 90a or 88a you probably can but you're entering wheel by territory as a anti-rocker frame it's amazing if you guys like the kaiser fluid 4 frame well this felt just like the kaiser fluid from 4 frame as fast and probably even faster than the fluid 4 or most of the the other anti-rocker frames on the market because only this little piece right here only this little line is touching while you're grinding so there's a reduced surface touching making this frame really fast also once again as an anti-rocker frame or even freestyle i didn't skate a freestyle but with this type of groove you would probably enjoy it as a freestyle frame too to use without wheels it's something that works really good and that's it 
Conclusions. It's a frame that I wasn't expecting to enjoy as a flat frame, but I actually think I can skate it flat, especially if I'm going to be using wheels like these. Harder in the middle, not so big, and not so square profile, like not so uh, square on the edges profile, not so flat on top profile. As an anti-rocker frame, close to perfection to me. And I chose to use the 250 millimeters because of that. And I am usually using a shorter frame for anti-rocker and a longer frame for flat. Now, am I gonna get the 270 millimeters too and try and flat? Most probably. And that's it. Those are my opinions about this. It works really good. I will be trying it. I will be testing it on other boots and I'll get back to you with my opinions. So if you wanna know what my opinion is about this frame on other boots and other boots and other frames and many other things skate related, make sure to subscribe to this channel. If you enjoy what I do here and if you wanna support what I do here, you can always become a member of this channel by pressing join on the place where that subscribe used to be. And yeah. Give me a thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you didn't like it. But if you didn't like it, let me know in the comments why you didn't like it. You can also let me know what you like about this video. And other than that, just like I finish every other video, I would like to remind you all why we all started skating. And that, that it's because it's fun. Now, cheers and see you soon.